Antonina Pizzula was one of the big winners in Croatia's elections for the European Parliament. Pizzula, a former foreign minister and other soon-to-be MEPs, are eager to take up their new posts. I believe that I, I can uh, contribute uh, under the roof of Strasbourg and Brussels uh, institutions, uh, fostering a Mediterranean profile of my country. I would like to see Croatia, as a member of the European Union, more active in the Mediterranean basin. Overwhelming. <laughs> I'm very proud and uh, it's really difficult to express my feelings now. Uh, uh, I think it will be a very interesting uh, experience for me. Croatia held elections for the European Parliament with 336 candidates vying for 12 seats. Despite a low voter turnout of just 20%, the main opposition party, the Croatian Democratic Union, made the biggest gains with six seats. The ruling Social Democrats got five and one seat went to Labour. The public support for Croatia's entry into the EU has been declining. In a referendum in January last year, 66% of Croatians said they were in favour, but today that number is down to 31%. I think these days, these months, these years in Europe, uh, ordinary people, citizens, they are eager to say no to politicians and the institution represented by politicians. Unfortunately, it also uh, uh, goes to the European Parliament. Strangely, none of the 12 winning candidates come from any of Croatia's Eurosceptic parties. In Croatia, there is a disparity between the push towards EU integration and a Eurosceptic tendency in some of its citizens who feel they have little understanding of how membership of the EU will affect them. We are a little skeptical towards the European Union, not from any ideological reasons, but from the simple reason that the European Union is more and more progressive in a strong mechanism, a instrumentarium. And Eurosceptics who lost out in the election say Croatians don't have much to gain from Europe. More things will be privatized in August. You won't be getting a chunk of money. In other words, if you want to join the Richmond's Club, you will have to probably pitch in with 500, 500 million euros, whatever. So basically I'm trying to dispel the illusions that many Croats still harbor about some tentative of possible good life in the European Union. It's a joke and it's a dangerous job. A big casualty to Croatia entering the EU will be the SEFTA trade agreement between non-EU countries in Southeast Europe. It accounts for 45% of Croatia's exports. Leaving SEFTA could force some companies to move to neighboring countries to avoid having to leave the trade pact. It could increase the price of popular Croatian goods sold in other countries. And with unemployment in Croatia at 22%, the domino effect of leaving SEFTA could be disastrous. The same exchange from SEFTA, according to the reports that come from the company, is said that at the end of the job, there could be a few thousand jobs without the need for 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 the need. One issue that hasn't gone down well with some people is that by signing up to the EU, Croatia has had to respect minority languages, thereby resolving the long-running dispute of a dominant use of the Serbian language in Vukovar, a mainly Serbian town in Croatia, that was ravaged during the war with Serbia in the early 90s. Ne osluškivanja interesa građana, da ona može dodatno generirati konflikt. A mislim da konflikt u ovoj situaciji nikome nije potreba, Tim više što je Hrvatska pred ulazkom u Europsku uniju, što je situacija u društvu u socioekonomskom smislu katastrofalna. Many questions remain when Croatia will join the EU in July. Will it expand its regional power base? Will membership advance its economy? And will it help to improve regional stability?